Hey friends, this is episode 10 of my F-350 build slash rescue. So in the last episode I rigged up a fuel source and connected it to a new lift pump and then used the starter button here to bypass the ignition swamp. Um, you'll see why I said that in a minute. To turn the engine over. I've now got fuel pressure at the fuel filter so I have a decent chance of starting it. But first, I need to show you how to hotwire it with five five wires. Uh, maybe not five. Yes, yes, I need to put the window back in, but I want to see if it runs first. Alright, so this wiring diagram suggests the yellow to red with light gray and green or gray with yellow. So let me get the camera set up and then I will jumper these. I've got some nice heavy gauge uh, jumper um, test leads and uh, that's what we're going to start with. Okay, so we're going to put a tap on. Uh, actually, hang on, I'm going to go get another tool. We're going to take those leads out. Okay, so this truck had a number of things going on before we hotwire it. So, turn signal switch was bad, the ignition linkage switch was broken. Um, the lock cylinder was broken, the coat hanger thing was messed up, and the switch itself was suspect. So I'm going to delete that whole messy, nasty assembly, and I'm going to replace the turn signal. But I bought this, which I had no idea existed prior to this project, and in theory this should let these cables out, although I don't know quite what is holding them in yet. Nothing for that one. Nothing for that one. And you wonder why this thing wouldn't fucking start. All right, so what do we got here for a retention mechanism? Really nice factory crimps, and we'll give them that. This, this connector is broken on the side here, so yeah, it just there's two more that came out. I made that easy. All reasons that this shitty design should be retired. Not sure what the retention mechanism. Okay, there it is. So there's different sizes and shapes of things that will release these little retainers. that. 
yellow ones are hot, so we just gotta figure out how to get the rest of these out. And it seems to be in the center, and it seems to be the small one. hurt in my hand to do this. in a slightly less expensive tool. I suspect we'll deliver similar results. There you go. I just broke the clip. All right, so we got all the wires out. Be right back. Okay, so we gotta find red with light green. I think that was pretty easy. That's one of our important ones. And then gray with yellow. This is a duplicate of the, this is on the start position, that's on the run position, they go to the same place. Black with light blue is our warning indicator, so we'll go ahead and patch that in. This might be important. So let's just verify that. Red with light blue is the starter interlock or the start switch, which doesn't work. Purple, what does purple do? Purple and white is the instrument cluster. I don't think that takes very much power, so we're gonna just take this from down here. Black and green, black and light green is windshield wiper, 
power windows, anti-lock brakes. So I'm gonna call that the convenience channel. And then gray and pink. Maybe it's black and pink, brown and pink. Okay, yeah, we said that was the starter side and then this. So that's the start solenoid and this is the run version. So at this point, we should be able to just Christmas tree all this. All right, so let's go see if it'll start. I almost forgot there's something else horribly wrong with this truck. Some jack weight put a curse on it. So we're going to pull this off because this will probably help it to start. Why in the hell you would ever put a Chevy up on a Ford truck is beyond me. Right back, I need a trim puller. All right, 
right, so that popped off there, and I put trash in its place, the recycle bin. Now that that curse has been removed from the truck, we'll see if it'll start. See if we have any new fuel leaks. Alright. I do see a new fuel leak on an injector back there, but that shouldn't stop anything. Although it might. Let me tighten that injector back up. It's this one back here that's leaking. sure this is not a terribly good sign but yeah that's more blow by than a steam engine um all right it's an old motor so maybe it'll get better once it's actually run for a change um that's an awful lot of blow by <clears throat> i was really hoping it would actually start and run but alas, that doesn't seem to be like that's going to be the case. Um, it's about 90 today, so I shouldn't need the glow plugs to fire it off. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to let the scatter cool off, and then I'm going to try and fire it over again. Alright, let's try it again. burning something almost I think we'll get it started tonight I wasn't so sure five minutes ago I'm gonna let the starter cool off before I burn it up all right I'm gonna try it again uh, I noticed a little bit more seepage around one of the other injector nuts so I think we had another little leak That could be 
fuel. I'm sure all of you are dying to know about this clunker that I brought back and have hot wired. And anyway, right now that's the starter button. Don't ask. But it does run. <laughs>
nice. Let's see what happened there. I wonder if we ran it out of diesel. Yeah, it might very well have. I'm only running off a one gallon tank. <laughs> back on regular fuel and get it off the uh, pony tank because we've definitely reintroduced some air into the line but it does run even if it has more blow by than a steam engine thanks for watching folks